Manny Garcia, an unknown photographer who took what would become the most known photograph of 2008. Barack Obama's hope poster that he used in his presidential campaign. Shepard Ferry took this photo, altered it with stencil art to give us this iconic piece. Shepard Ferry is the one who made the millions off this photograph. Is that fair? Good God Almighty, like back in the old days, you know, like when the A&R would tell us what to play and how to play it. If you are an avid Drake fan like myself, you know that that is the intro lyric to his song, Pound Cake, from his album, Nothing Was The Same. Drake sold over 7.5 million copies of that album. Is the success of Drake because of how he uses other people's music? Who knows? Coming to the continent in Kenya, a woman weaves a bag called a kyondo. It's made out of sisal and leather. Looks like that. Very beautiful. A Japanese tourist saw the bag, liked it, returned to Japan, and created an automated way to mass produce the kyondo, and is selling it at a much higher price than the Kenyan woman is. Is that fair? Coming a little closer to home, here in Southern Africa, you see the sun people using hudia as a plant to suppress their hunger and give them energy when they go hunting for long periods of time. Scientists in Pretoria interacted with the sun community, took hudia back to the lab, and found indeed they did it did suppress hunger and give them energy when they went hunting for long periods of time. So they paired up with pharmaceuticals internationally to give us an anti-obesity, appetite suppressant drug. In Ethiopia, we see the coffee house farmers challenging Starbucks for rights to name their coffee. Is that fair? I'm going to stop here to tell you why these stories matter to me. I love ideas. I'm obsessed with them. I spend a lot of time learning about ideas, talking to people who make ideas, and I spend a lot of time reading about ideas. The type of idea that gave us a multi-billion dollar social network because a guy wanted to meet more girls on campus. Facebook. The type of idea that revolutionizes the entire music industry by giving us a musical album with a full complement of videos in one day. Beyonce. The type of idea that results in the way we experience a concert being different because of a seven-sided audiovisual screen. Kanye West. I love ideas. I also love Namibian ideas. The type of idea that takes the Namibian landscape, the color and the shape, to give us an interesting line of fashion like the top I'm wearing, my republic. Or the type of idea that crossed my first love, analytical chemistry, with cosmetology to give us Kiyomi Sands. I love ideas. If you know my history, you won't be surprised why. I come from a family where my father is a gifted businessman, my mother is a talented writer, and my brothers are creative in the music world. But it was not long after being with them in the family that I realized that I don't have a creative bone in my body. And that made me feel very insecure. I'm going to admit a weakness to you that I suffer from. I suffer from something called fixed mindset mentality. People with fixed mindset mentality believe that their strengths are their strengths and their weaknesses are their weaknesses and there's nothing they can do about it. So we're not very good at improving things, but I'm happy to tell you that I'm working on this weakness. So because I decided that I didn't have a creative bone in my body, I abandoned the whole idea that I could ever create anything worth being celebrated. But, I still found myself surrounding 
myself with ideas. All the time I was reading, talking, and listening to ideas. So I asked myself, if I'm not creating the ideas, what else can I do in idea world? I quickly learned I value ideas. What we value, we must protect. And so began my quest to become an idea protector. I decided I was going to be the person who was a security guard over people's ideas. I work in intellectual property, or IP for short, so you can call me an IP professional or an intellectual property agent. Now, when I tell people that I'm an intellectual property professional, I get met with the following questions. Where do you sell houses? Or, I was having trouble with my agent in this suburb, can you help me? And that used to frustrate me so much because I didn't want to be likened to a real estate agent. No offense to all the real estate agents, it's just not a career path that I would be particularly interested in. So because I was constantly met with the idea that I was a real estate agent, I was forced to find a link between what they do with houses and with what I do with ideas. And my silly little analogy is this. Real estate agents sell homes that hopefully have fences. A fence accomplishes a number of things. It protects our home. It demarcates ownership. I think you would agree with me that nothing quite says this is my house more than a fence does. And depending on how elaborate the design is, a fence actually adds value to the overall property. So in the same way, intellectual property does that, but for ideas. I act like a wall or a fence, but I don't protect a house I protect ideas. Why do we need intellectual property? As I said, my analogy, a fence helps protect. Frankie Gay, um, Marvin Gaye's children will tell you why it is important to have a fence. Frankie Gay went and sued Robin Thicke, T.I. and Pharrell Williams because they took their father's tune and put it in the song, Blurred Lines. A judge awarded them initially 7.3 million US dollars. They re later reduced it to 5.1 million because of theft. I kid you not, those kids are really happy that there's a fence over their dad's song. Apple and Samsung will also tell you how important it is to have a fence as they continue to battle it out in the largest patent war of our time. Who owns the smartphone? And in that way, we see fences doing what we need them to do, which is protect ideas. This number, one trillion, represents in US dollars the amount of money that the copyright industry contributed to the US economy in 2016. Remember my housing analogy that a fence adds to the value of the property? One trillion US dollars from songs, books, movies, poetry, sculpture, computer software programs added to the US economy in the year 2016. Intellectual property helps ideas to be more valuable. My story about the Ethiopian coffee farmers. They fought Starbucks in a trademark war. Although they did not win the way they were supposed to, the type of publicity that it engendered helped the coffee farmers now sell one kilogram of coffee bean for six US dollars, whereas before they were selling it for one US dollar. You and I both know that the difference in five US dollars changes those Ethiopians' lives, not only their life, but the way they do business. We live in a time where Africa's rhetoric is that we're growing, we are rising. Everywhere we see, Africa is booming. And I put it to you that we are not going to see this type of economic growth if we do not invest in the protection of our ideas. We have to protect 
what is ours. My hope with this talk is that I would inspire one of you to join me in the cause of being an idea protector. If you don't, it's to inspire you as an audience to respect people's ideas, to respect what we own. Because the truth is, the theft of a phone is just as important as the theft of an idea for a book. And we will not be able to do our jobs if you as a community do not support us in protecting people's ideas. Because if you don't rally up with us, this continent will not rise.